To start once again. Back in the town, you found. Then the kill down now. I would die to change things that kill down now. Do do doom doom. Pride have turned a path. And you can't to break it through. To dot once again, I'm still mapping you. Hey, Cooper. Still mapping you. Friend, turn and pass. And the moon can freak it through. Is the meaning of time to start once again? I love you. Um, this is not about a person. This is about a bush. This bush is in a bag, and I think that I'm in love. I love this plant. It's a plant that I like a lot. Oh, uh, how do I, how do I do all this internet crap? I'm still loving you. Okay, Doki, what? Uh, Friday, turn a path, and you're bound to break it when you really no gain. Do but once again, I'm blabbing <laughs> Uh, Hello everybody, and good morning, from Ingrid Bernal here. Um, I am accompanied today by this bush in a bag. This is a small plant in a paper sack. And I love it. I've never had feelings about a plant like the feelings I have about this plant. This plant has never let me down. This plant believes in me and my dreams and my needs. And I have a nice little hangover happening right now. But thanks to this plant, this bush in a bag my hangover will be okay I have a bush in a bag and the stream is gonna be cool is there really no chance that I can't draw maps I'm loving you I love this bush and I love that it lives in a bag it speaks to its free spirit it lives in this paper sack and I don't know about you guys or how many plants you have in your life but I'm guessing I'm gonna go out on a limb here <laughs> see what I did go out on a limb get it it's a little tree humor uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna guess that the plants in your life don't live in a paper sack but this one does. This this is a, I think it's a lavender plant, and it lives in this paper sack. And I love it. It's one of the best friends I've ever had. This plant won't let me down. This plant believes in me. And I believe in this plant. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome back to Cartoons. No easy task to get out of bed today. A lot of times nine o'clock, you know, feels like you know, hey, okay. 
been up for a few hours, got a bush in a bag. But today, I was still mostly deceased. Yeah, Christian, he understands, or she, I'm not sure. What Brandon Lopez asks. <laughs> This little tiny bush in this paper sack is my friend. That's why. Okay, so we are going to... Uh, I'm answering a challenge and or request from the incomparable Nate Vanderzee over at WASD20, which if you're not familiar with that YouTube channel, you should be because he has very entertaining intro music. Fun 8-bit intro. Oh my gosh, I was playing Pokemans last night. And I finally evolved Pajoto. Okay. So uh, Nate over at WASD20 asked me to do a stream um, where I did uh, some map work, but in color rather than just monochrome. Oh. Apparently this is a shipping lane now. I have my window open because it's been hot, but I think it's going to rain today because my little friend here, he needs rain. Okay, so Nate asked me if I could do a stream where I do a map, but in color rather than just monochrome, black and white or brown and tan kind of monochrome, which is generally how you see a lot of maps. So the problem with a full color map is that it can be a little too um, on the nose, so to speak. On the nose being like very literal and so what you don't want to do with a map is accidentally try to paint like a picture of a world because it will never look like a world for one thing because the world is too big of a subject to do a painting of but secondly you you lose the suggestive components that a map needs to sort of be like suggesting the details Cooper Oh my God, you are the most annoying goat on the mountain. So good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Cartoons. My name is Ingrid Bernhall. Welcome to Northern Rune Hemeria. We are about to do some color mapping. Now, on that note, what am I going to do? I saw a great idea come up on Facebook the other day, and I want to imitate it, and that's okay. So I'm going to do this thing. I don't know if you guys can see my circle tool. I got a circle tool. So I am going to, even though this stream is about doing color mapping, I'm still going to have an anchor, right? I don't want to just like be, be doing, you know, random colors out in the void. I still need an anchor of colors. And so we're going to start with this nice brown tone. And our colors are going to be sort of inspired by this, this brown color. I'm going to do this. And I, I just think this is kind of fun. It's kind of cool, you know. That's all I'm saying. So this is a, a small plant in a paper sack. And it's going to be spending some time with me. Hopefully a lot of time in the near future. Because I love this plant. Okay. Uh, this, I'm going to kind of thin this out. But I'm not going to get rid of it entirely. So I just got my eraser going here. So I got... A separate layer. Okay, now look at this. Look at this. I'm going to load this selection. Now you could do this with a series of tools. You could do all kinds of like selections and you can do vectors and all kinds of silliness, but I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it by hand. Look at this. What am I doing? I'm just doing this. I'm just doing this right now. I'm just present in this moment. Me and my bush, this little plant here that lives in this paper bag, we're present in this moment and no other moment. You know, the future may or may not arrive. The past is gone. We can't get it back. So I say live now. 
If you know, if you meet a plant and you got some really strong feelings for that plant, then you can you can be with that plant. Okay, so there, that's that's what I wanted to do is this kind of sort of border thing. But I wanted to do it by hand. So you could use all these tools to do this like sort of mathematically, but that, that frankly bores me. So I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm gonna do a couple cuts. Why? I don't know. I just This is where it's starting. A little stuffy this morning because like I said, I'm still reeling from a bit of a hangover. I was very happy yesterday. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious brown god water. Thank you for caffeinating my my beer addled brain. <laughs> and you, my green friend. Thank you for being a plant in a paper bag. I've never had feelings like this for a plant. It's really exciting new development in my life. Okay, I'm still just working on these sort of meridians, I guess you could call them. Which are some of the sort of key lines. And this makes it look like my map is more than it is. Because let's face it, I'm just going to invent some continents and invent some mountain ranges and stuff. So the meridians give you this sort of Ooh, you guys hear that? It's awfully early for that kind of stuff. But you know, some of these summer weekends, people get crazy. You know, like maybe they're, they go swimming and they get in dangerous situations. Then you got Cooper. Cooper, I really don't know which is more annoying. Early morning sirens or you? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys all had a nice Friday. Welcome to Cartoons. My name is Ingrid Bernal. We are mapping in color. Coffee is quite nice, quite nice indeed, quite nice indeed. Okay, so, right, I'm still just doing these meridians. And, you know, you guys, I might get a little meditative today. I might look to the side. It doesn't mean that I don't love you. Because, believe me, the love is copious. It's just I'm checking the, um, the comments. And you have to pardon the road noise outside, but I have my windows open. I think it might even rain today, which would be divine. Hang on, I gotta pay a quick visit to my new best friend. Hello. Hello, Lawrence. God, I love him. The love I feel for this plant is so stinking strong. Okay, so just a quick experiment to see where those colors will take me. Just change that to uh, overlay there. So that's cool. And I'm going to start facing the challenge. So the challenge that Nate put forth to me was to do a paint project in color. You see a lot of maps where they are done in monochrome or black and white. My gosh, I cannot breathe right now. You ever wake up and it's just like a family of elves have moved into your sinuses? Sinuses? So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to sort of find those colors that overlay mode did, but without using overlay mode because overlay mode is going to make my life hell. So anyways, the challenge is to do some world mapping, but to do it in color. And this is very challenging because... On the one hand, you want to do sort of thematic color, but you want at least to represent water as blue, and you want some sort of staples, right? You want some sort of foundational elements. And so how do you bring all those colors together and make it look cool 
without just having like cartoon land right like this like oh look it's a freaking cartoon well what you do is you you can use a lot of different techniques but you want to do the blending technique just like you would with a hero painting so let me show you a little bit how to do that I grab this blue and I do a little stroke like that so look I've already done all my work right there it's just hard for you to see here let's do it over here where you can see a little better there it is see that little see that little blob of color there there's my color so now I just want to grab this and look there it is so that's blue now you're thinking to yourself Ingrid Bernal that doesn't look that blue to me that's okay that's okay because we are going to start to build a set of colors look at this look how blue that is it's a little more blue right so I just get a large brush and I'm sort of disrupting this blue right now that way I don't just have this perfect fill of one color it's a little more it's disrupted it's a little bit broken up in a, in a nice way look at that isn't that nice I can take that original periwinkle tone scribble it in a little bit there now I have my base there you go so it's interesting because this color what is going on out there I've got a madman on the loose in my neighborhood luckily I have this plant in a paper bag and I also have a 10 pound sledgehammer right here so I'm not worried oh and look at this I also have this piece of toast mm. okay so we've got some blues and this is going to be the challenge of doing the map in color is finding these color sets that work together and do it well and then at the end we're going to do a finishing step that make going to make it really cool okay let's stay focused i still don't think these colors are quite right how do i know that i don't know instinct there we go that's my better so here's the thing these aren't just colors just hanging out no these colors are important look at this that's like a greenish brown that we're going to use for our continents but check this out you don't want like here's just with the color right by itself right Get a nice big brush a real gentle stroke look at that now we have that color blended with our blue see the difference the difference isn't huge but it's very important because now these colors won't vibrate against each other they're, they're friends just like me and my my little plant here we're friends and since this layer is underneath my meridians I can freely paint my continents and it just goes right under and it looks like I know what I'm doing when I totally don't okay now my shapes here for my coastline are going to be a little blocky because I'm using a blocky brush but that's okay we're going to revisit this man there's really something something bad must have happened there's more sirens it's terrible I hope everybody's all right well they're probably not if I'm hearing sirens so that's sad <laughs> All right, so here's your sort of polar land masses. One of these kind of comes down. And somehow these meridians are kind of, they're useful too when you're doing mapping because they feel like they mark like eco zones. So if you want to cover a certain amount of variety for your world, like I want to have some tropical, I want to have some polar, I want to have some temperate, then these little meridians, even though they're just humble little lines, they can give you this feeling of, sort of covering your bases now it may look silly like I'm getting a little too even with my polka dots but we haven't got to the next step yet so just bear with me I'm gonna make a sort of an inland sea here
Okay. Okay. Now to get my final coastline, I'm going to go back to my blue with my same brush. And I'm going to use it almost like it's an eraser. Look at that. And this is going to start to create accidents. And those accents will give this impression of an organic level of detail. See that? So let's say you really wanted to push it further. You could paint a lot more paint. Put all this paint down with the intent of getting rid of most of it. Look at this. But since you're a human being, you're invariably you're going to miss a lot of little bits, and those are your bits. That's your coastline. Look at that. It's nice. That feels good. Okay, so here's like a southern continent. So again, just letting my hand wander here. There's no rhyme or reason to any of this stuff. I'm just using the sort of water color, the ocean color, to cut or reduce my land masses. And as I make mistakes and miss things, it creates this organic level of detail. Oh yeah, it is so nice out today. I'm just a little stuffy because I'm hungover. But you know, that's all going to pass. It's going to be a beautiful, fun day filled with adventure and monkey meat. Cooper will maintain his level of annoyance throughout the day, so that can always be counted on. Okay, so we're still just working through these coastlines here. So this is the first step if you really want to do some mapping and color, is let go of line art. Like, leave it, leave it on the roadside. You don't need to think about line art. You're going to think about color and painting and, and blobs and not drawing outlines. I know that drawing outlines is a very common mindset for doing art, but for this particular technique, you're going to think more like a painter and less like an illustrator. So we're just working our way down these coasts here. Everything's fine. Everybody out there, I hope you're having a nice, calm, quiet Saturday morning. The family all around, happy in your jammies, a little coffee maybe. Maybe some, some Fruit Loops going on there. Maybe some rice checks in that little bowl you have. Maybe you're like an oatmeal kind of kind of person. I don't know. It's all good in the hood. Okay. So, you see already, we have our land masses. And babouche, there you are. So now, for me, what makes a world map interesting is its utility for the gamer. For either player or dungeon master. And right now, I just have too much ocean. You know, ocean isn't terribly useful in a D&D campaign, right? Because, you know, you can only do so much gameplay just out on the open ocean. So we're going to add a little more land mass so we can play a little more. Have a little more, you know, playground to create variety. But, again, like utility for the map, to me, is paramount. Like, I want a map that's useful and fun at the table, so it has enough specificity in the locations where it feels like, you know, almost as useful as, like, the map in, like, Mario 2. You know, that's a very, very useful map. You use it to navigate the world. Okay, so here's our primary continent is mostly equatorial, which is already a bit interesting. But then you have this continent over here, which is our, our temperate continent. Then you have a very large southern polar one, which is kind of interesting and becomes temperate. And that's I think that's where I'm going to begin. Um, I think a good size for these to print these out is like poster size. So like, you know, about 
about uh, two and a half feet by a foot and a half. You know, 30 by 18 or so, something like that. You don't want to get so huge that it's unwieldy, difficult to transport and look at, but you don't want to get so small that it's underwhelming, so there's something in between. And it's something about the size of like a, a play mat. As a matter of fact, it'd be pretty cool to print this right onto a play mat. You can do custom play mats. Maybe that's what I'll do at the end of this. Right now, though, I just wish I could breathe through my nose. But I can't. And that's okay. Okay, so I have too many islands. I'm just like annoyed with all these islands. There we go. I also like islands that come in little archipelagos, and so I'm going to do some of that. Like these little curved, you know, where the um, where the Earth, the planet's crust moves over a, a volcanic system and it leaves a string of islands. I just, that's always cool to me. Okay. Anyway, let's move in a little bit. Let's just move in. Now that's a little too close. And that's another thing, is if you do your map really high resolution, you're going to find yourself looking at a lot of work. So I recommend not getting so crazy with the resolution that you feel like you're like drawing an actual planet, because it'll take you years. Um, this is just a sort of a personal project, I suppose. Nate over at WASD20, which is a YouTube channel you should check out, wanted me to try doing a color map. He said he gets a little... A little stumbly when he when he's uh, doing color map work because it can be a little more in intimidating than doing line work. Okay, okay. All right. So how are we going to do this? First of all, get your color. What color is snow? It's white, right? So I got white here. But remember our trick. There's your white. And then you want to grab a color in here. Look at that. See, it's not quite white. It's a mixture. And then there's another color. Okay, so now we have two colors. I don't want to play with those. So what we're going to do first is just we're going to lay down a little bit of representation in our world. Meaning we're going to represent things like snow, ice, plants and so forth. Okay, that's the first step. But then, more importantly, we're going to start to think about locations. And locations are what's going to be more useful to the sort of gamer brain. To the RP brain. Right? For, for your campaign, you don't necessarily need, like, artistic representations of eco-zones eco or ecotones. You need locations to travel to that, that imply or include lore travel time, and information of this kind. So bang, right there, we're looking good, we're feeling good, this is happy times. And you see how my colors are linked together? Now, I'm going to get a little crazy. I want a little more pop. I got to admit it. Just a little more pop. Like just a little more sort of vividness. And you can do that by uh, adding a little bit of contrast and adding just a little bit of saturation. And this is, can, can make the image feel more vivid or more poppy. Oh, yeah. You know, dragons are always the explanation of just about everything in our hobby. So I don't know if I'm fully positing a world story quite yet. I don't know if I'm to that stage. So now I'm just adding some fracturing, or as I like to call it, disruption. Disruption is just taking what may seem like overly simple shapes and giving them additional form or detail. Break up, I think is another word sometimes people use. No one wants to break up. Okay, so now similarly, just like uh, that was executed, now I want to think about some temperate stuff, right? So I'm going to use the same technique. Just watch this. So simple. And remember, we're not drawing individual little trees. That's not the jam right now. You're going to take this green. Look at that. That green's weird, right? Good grief. Let's just 
drive that through my neighborhood. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Still just looks so green, so very, very green. Maybe in here. There we go, there. So see, I take a really light stroke, then sample it, and there's my green. So how did I know when I succeeded? A good way to plumb your instincts when looking for colors is to just put them on the color that they're going to live on, like literally like in the blob. <laughs> and where they meet is where you want to focus your attention, where colors touch is where you can feel them. So if you feel vibration or if it looks blurry or if you feel like discomfort, which can be caused by like clashing colors, then you have all the skill that I have right there. It's just a matter of trusting your instincts when you see either vibration or clashing. And then remember, if you're looking for a color and you're struggling, you can't find that color you want. Just do a stroke that is not fully opaque of one color on top of another, then sample the resulting mixture and you're gonna have a new color and that could be the one you're looking for because they're friends already, because they're, they're blends of each other. Okay, so I'm just doing some forests. So this world has what, like maybe six or so really big forests. And that's where I was talking about locations. That is a manageable number of forest locations. And then you might also get a little bit of information about where there's not a forest, like right here. I'm not gonna put any trees right there because these are like, you know, the rocky wastes. So let's go up here. I'm gonna grab that brown, pull all the color out. There's a comparable gray, but it's just so stinking dark. Look how grumpy and dark that is. There we go, that's a little better. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna get the mixture of the gray, and I'm gonna do these like wastes. And so this also might fill me in on just a gray that I could use throughout the piece. And this could be my mountains. But remember, the temptation to do individual mountains it's very strong. What you can do instead if you're using a triangle brush like I am is a little bit hint at the mountains like that. But I think that seeing the triangular brush strokes is just disruptive to your look. But see, wherever I just put a little gray schnurp to burp, those are going to be mountains. Now don't worry, we're going to come back and detail some of this stuff. So everybody just stay calm. Now I'm grabbing some previous colors, now I'm just working. There we go, there we go, looking good. Okay, I'm going to hit the save button now. And Ooh, there's a little glimpse into my universe, eh? Look at that. Okay. Don't forget the canos. I don't know what canos are. You mean canoes? This is my plant. It lives in a paper bag. Okay. Let's move on. I'm going to grab this blue. Which has almost no color in it. And I'm just going to start playing with a little bit of coastline stuff. Look at this. I'm just playing here. These are like little waves that are rolling up against the continents. Again, I don't have to do everything. And indeed, you could almost say to the players, you know, wherever you see these kind of symbols, that indicates like, you know, really wild riptides. So that's the purpose of putting these lines on the map for, for the sake of navigation. Like wherever you see these little ripples are like, you know, the North Shore sort of or of Hawaii, you know, it's like this crazy surf and riptides and hidden rocks and shallow reefs. Another thing you could do is grab one of these more subtle colors, like this this sort of light periwinkle here, and we could do some like sort of world currents. Look at this. 
Oop, don't hit the land. Not allowed to hit land with these. This is a, a pretty subtle, subtle, a subtle color differentiation here, but gives you this feeling of like that there's more detail than there really is, which I think is important for a sort of a fun, convincing map. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's take a look. Definitely digging it. Definitely digging it. We we don't really have any sort of like deserty stuff going on. So again, remember remember your techniques. Just you know, when in doubt, get those techniques. Now this time, just through luck, I think I guessed it my right color. But you know, you you want to be doing your mixture. And then use your mixture to find your color. This time I just happened to guess at the a pretty decent one. So whoopsie on that one. Here's desert number two. So there's really just a couple of deserts in this world. And that's okay. You know? Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be just fine. Here we go. Really nice. Then in a few spots in these mountains, you could go back, you could add some lighter gray, and it's going to make it feel like that some of the mountains are taller than the others. And again, the triangle brush could be your friend here. It can kind of feel like a little mountain highlight. And then for bonus points, you just get a little bit of snow occurring here and there. And, and if you like the feeling of sort of that much detail, go back to your green. Do some smaller brush giblets. Cooper. Good grief, dog. It's just a never-ending campaign of annoyance. Okay, so then here, here. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with my gray. Just extra little giblets. See, it just gives it this feeling of giblets. And giblets are your friend. The friendly little giblets just floating around in the sea here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay. I'm going to go back to my meridians. And I'm going to add some more because I just, I like their effect on the piece. And I feel like they're, I don't know, they're cool. They're cool, man. They're just cool. Okay. And then I almost feel like maybe you need a couple of these vertical meridians to help mark the distances and stuff. And that is start, starting to feel pretty neat, huh? And you know, we're going we're gonna to push this even further. But first, we need to get some variation in these greens. Look at these greens, man. They're just too, it's too monochrome. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to get a brighter green. We'll go in here. And with, you know where these trees maybe either you could use your brighter green to indicate jungle. Or like, you know, particularly lush foliage. Maybe instead of this nice brighter green, you want to do like a, a, a scary green. Like we could go here. Go down instead, like that. And then you get these like darker forests. But I think that light, a lighter green is just what the map wants as a piece of art. So, this is the desert peninsula of Darnak. Beldar! Okay, so now, dear Beldar. Why did you steal my car? Okay, so I'm gonna go right here. Now look, I'm getting a, a landmass selection right now. So again, I usually don't use like a bunch of crazy tools and stuff like that, but I'm going to in this case because I want to do something cool, man. I want to get cool, man. So we are doing a color map, but I still like the sense of like line work sometimes. And so I'm gonna grab this color which is being used on the meridians right now. I'm gonna stroke this selection.
it's too it's too big look at this guys look at that look at that look at the magic that just happened do you see the magic that just happened do you see the magic So what I did there was I just got myself a selection for the land masses and stroked it with the color that's used on the meridian layer. And it gives me this look. Now, what's fun about having this meridian layer and this color established like this is now you go back and now we're gonna, now we're gonna get into the monkey part. I just wanted to go a little darker here. There we go. Okay, now, what do I mean by the monkey part? I don't know what that means. But look, I'm going to start adding these little guys. Look at these little guys. Look at these. These are like little location indicators. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That's so fun. So fun. Now these can be used for all kinds of things. And then also, you guys have seen me do this trick. Here, I'll, let's add yet another layer. I know we're getting a little bit into the layer of silliness right now. But now we're gonna do like, sort of like a navigation or shipping lanes. And look at this. You're just gonna do a big old ugly line like this. Oh my God, it's hideous. And look at this one, terrible. All the way over here. Then from the deserts of Darn to the forests of Bolak. Then we have the Jabuli Islands. And Fredor up here. The coast of Skellig. Okay, so you can do as many of these as you want. You can do a lot more. Then get your eraser. Make it comparable in size. And then look at this. Just squiggle your way to freedom. Look at this. I'm just squiggling along with an eraser. Just me and a plant in a paper bag. Discovering life together. Dreaming. Hoping. And you know, for the sake of your game, like these shipping lanes could actually be named, you know, like there's the, kind of like the Kessel Run. <laughs> the Kessel Islands, that's a good one. Okay. So now if it feels a little too bold, which it does to me, you just reduce the opacity a bit, like down like that. Even less might be cute. There we go. And then I'm gonna put that on my meridian layer and I'm gonna move on with life. Cool, right? So now what I've also discovered is the color. Look at that. Look at that little color there. Look at that little guy. So with that color, I'm now going to do a silly thing. I'm gonna do these sort of circle selections. Just like three of them. And these indicate like, you know, areas you don't want to go or something like Kraken Zones. There we go. Okay. And there's the, the look that I'm starting to work toward. Oh, hey, Chuck. Thanks, dude. Dear Lord, Goldschlager. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm just selecting these little areas. Cooper's being annoying. And then I'm going to do contrast in them, which may sound crazy, but check it out. Okay, the color isn't really rich enough, so I just go here. And there, there, that's giving me what I wanted. It's almost like an area of extra wateriness. So another thing I can do is go here, do that. There we go. That's what I wanted. See how that gives me some like, what does that even mean? Yeah, exactly. These routes go through these areas and it's like, whoa. That's the fun of it, my friend. That's the fun of it. So now I really like the effect I'm getting with that coastline that I did. So check this out, guys. Check this out. Yo. Yo, ham. Yo, check this out. Yo. 
I'm going to get me some greens up in here. I'm going to select this. Boom. 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 These are now... These are my forests up in here, yo. This is my forest. This is my family. Okay. I'm going to go here. These aren't just forests. These are my family. Boom. Boom. Down there with that color. Then I'm going to do it again. Look at this. I'm just like... It's just crazy. Look at this. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, my color is a little bit bold, right? So I want to back up. Let's not get crazy. Get this. I'm going to go like here instead. And then I think we need a lighter line too because the outer line is the heavy one. Mm, not enough. Let's go down here. Now, I know there are other ways and other more advanced tools to do this kind of stuff, but this works just fine for my purposes. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Now, I've got a couple spaces where I didn't want lines to happen where they happened. Because I'm new here. There we go. Oh, here's another one. Good to go. Cool, man. Now, there's also, I think there's sea ice. Ooh. Look at this. Sea ice. But... You don't have to draw all the sea ice. You just need to do some white. Put it out in the ocean. Boom. Sea ice. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. Here's a big one out here. Ooh. Some kind of weird island. Sort of mini continent. Sea ice. Okay. So since I'm a little short on time now, I wanted to show you some tips on... A, finishing the map, and B, labeling. So for labeling, let's go back to our meridian layer and get this nice color, these meridians, then darken it down just a bit. There you go. No big deal. Let's go in here and let's write, um, you know, Kessel. Now you're going to want a non-ridiculous font like that. It's a little silly. Um, a lot of people ask what I use. I use Tratatello quite a bit for mapping because I just feel it, it has a nautical but not ridiculous look. Okay, so this isn't the world of Kessel, but we can leave this label up here. Clone this. Now here's a fun tip. Get your text and arc this bugger. Not much. Just like that much. Curved text will always fit in map spaces in much more interesting ways. Okay, so you can do this. I also think this color is just way too strong. So I can find a stronger color by doing this. Not stronger, but better. So I'm reducing its opacity then I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to find that color. Oops. Get my text. There it is. There. Now I can bring the opacity back up. That's it at full opacity, and it's a better color. See that? So that's cool. Okay, so another cool trick you can do with your text is then arc it the other way. Like that. And then also go into this annoying little box and put like 200 in here. Ooh, it's not even enough, is it? Let's do like 888. There we go. And we're going to change our text to something like, you know, you know, Blarn. So you see what you do is you just do lots of letter spacing, a little bit of arcing, and then you find that your labels will fit into your map in a really cool way. See the, the difference here between Kessel and Blarn? <laughs> okay. So you're going to do all your labels that way. Next up, Let's say you want to do some rivers. Get in tight. 
Grab that. This is super simple. Grab that ocean color and just pull it in. Look at that. Bang. Now you're not getting your outline right, so you're you're grumpy, but you can figure that out later. It's quite easy. Another trick: get your outline color right there. Draw your river in. So let's say we're going to put a river right here. Only drawing on land, like that. Then get your watercolor, teeny little pen, and do this. Bang. And you'll start to get all kinds of organic results. Which, so far, I don't like. So I like this better. Just bringing that watercolor, cutting it right into the continent. And then one, one great river which runs this sort of through this woods and up to these mountains. Okay, and so on. You can do as many of those as you feel your world needs. Okay, now, yes, we need some like extra meridian work, as I've been calling it. I'm just going to kind of do this sort of stuff. And then another tip, you can go to your brush, take shape dynamics off of it, and take transfer off of it. So you're now just going to get fixed thicknesses. Go here, hold shift, and then poof, you're going to get these crazy lines, right? Whoa, that's a little strong there, Ingrid. So make a new layer. Do the same thing. Boop, 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 boop. Shippity beep, bop. Bang, right there. He's got, what are these? I don't know. They're like weird navigation lines or something. Okay, then just pull them down. There you go, barely opaque. You've got this look. Okay, so let's say that you're completely done. And I guess you could do a compass rose. It's a thing, right? So how do you do one? Let's talk about it down here make a circle keep your meridian color stroke that son of a gun uh, I want to bring back my my brush functions okay. so here's a fun trick don't make your entire compass rose just make one side of it Okay, so let's say you, you put all this nice little detail work into your compass. But here's my, here's my tip for you. Go back, delete half of this sucker, and then clone it and flip it. And, and you get this really nice, very precise look. There you go. You know, and you can put as much work in, as you went into that. Then, of course, you put your little north on there, and so on and so on. You could do your little distance measurer thingy, you know, which a lot of maps have and stuff like that. There you go. Now, the final step, because we're coming up on an hour. Bit of a shorter stream because I'm half dead. So, really quick, I'm going to send you back to the, the title screen here. Shoo-ba-doo! There you go. And this is so I can get my browser open. And you want to get your browser open and you want to search for paper. Get yourself a nice royalty-free image of old paper. Now, don't worry. You're not, you're not here to get a bunch of really interesting texture and stuff like that. You're here for color. Okay, so there we go. Got it. I'm good. I'm floating. Okay, back here. Let's get back. Hey, I'm back in the little rectangle, guys. Okay, go here. Beep. There's my paper that I found online. So do a couple things. Be cool. First of all, fit your image down a little bit. But the cool things you want to do, you don't want all this. Look at this, this is like a photo of paper. You don't want to have photos in your artwork. That's lame. So just filter out a lot of the details. So you go to filter gallery, do something like paint daubs or dry brush, whatever. Sure, I'll just take whatever this setting is. There you go. See, it gets rid of a lot of that photographic shibbity bop. And you don't want it anyway. Look, you're just doing this bang overlay. Pew, there you go. 
instant magic super detailed aging uh, pyronine I will not talk about that that will be revealed in time all right now I'm gonna pull a little bit of the color out get a little darker with it looking cool right looking kind of different too which is something that's exciting now look at this so that's that meridian sort of thing that I've been working on I'm gonna make another layer I'm going to get pure black, which is like a bit of a no-no color. No-no. No-no. Here we go. Now I just stroked that whole meridian layer, but on its own layer. So that's kind of crazy, right? It's like, dear Lord, you just you just ruined your image, Ingrid. Don't be scared. Deleting a lot of this. Just got my eraser out here, by the way, if you're wondering what tool this is. It's just that the stroke I did is on its own layer, so I'm, I can freely do this. My name is Martin Freely. Welcome to my aquarium. Plywood chairs will be provided. Please do not feed the fish. Okay, there we go. So I just wanted to get that. That's really what I was after. And then I'm gonna do another overlay here, and then I'm gonna pull down the opacity because stuff is crazy. And there we go. See, it's sort of part of my antiquing, is that I needed that little extra bit of layering. I don't like the name Kessel. It's making me go insane. Um, this is the world of Madeira. Doing things in the center is kind of weak sauce, so I'm going to go up here. So you see, once again, always farming the colors you've already found when it's time and you need another color. Always farming. Vera Farmiga, welcome to the world of Madeira. Now, I still feel like I could use a little more bite. There we go. See how that just made it bite a little harder? And we could even add a bit more blue. You can make it feel more antique with red and so on and so forth. But I'm pretty happy. So now for the final step. Since we have these interesting sort of circular, these kind of no the Kraken zones. I'm kind of interested in those. I'm going to grab one. a bit of a careful selection here okay there it is see that little guy look at that little dude I'm gonna do this step again get this color remember always farming colors you've already figured out that's the the heavy lifting of this project is finding colors okay now getting in a little closer if I get this red here get rid of this overlay for now give me this little reddish brown okay cool and then I'm just making a little sort of like town icon or, or like location icon. See now, since I'm drawing with the same color, the edge of this circle is my friend because they just sort of merge without a bunch of work. And I like friends, so I'm voting yes on friends in 2018. So there's my little thing, and now you can make you know several of these, right? You can make a little castle one, you can make a little house, you can make like a little mountain, you can make a little dungeon door. But what this lets you do is get really clear delineation of loca locations without having to sort of portray them in a photographic way or a representative way. It's just an iconic way, and that's far easier. It's gonna save you a lot of pain. 
You don't want pain. Vote yes on friends. Vote no on pain in 2018. I kind of like my little roof piece better, so I'm just going to... Oops. There we go. Okay. 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 Looking good. So, you see, it blends a little too good, right? It's It sort of blends in. So, again, let's give it bite using this technique. There you go. See, now it's almost like it's from a different sort of realm of colors and you can then get further differentiation this way another way you can remove color from it like that that really works almost like a sort of a board game right and then just clone these suckers these are now like the capital cities of this world there's three of them yeah it's cool and then like you could you can add some little like label lines to them if you want um, maybe they have some light line work around them or measuring lines around them like how far things are and so on and so forth now there's one color which is distinctly missing from this bring me back my aging bring it back there we go and that is red my friends who took the red out now you don't have to have red in your images of course but if you do, you might feel cool. What are these marking? I don't know. I'm just playing. I'm just curious if red is going to have a, a good place in my world. And I think it does. It's going to mark these. These are like sort of like little wax seals or something that are on my world. That's it. So between those techniques, you should be able to find your way to glory. Now, one final step. I'm noticing some annoyance here. You can use your little stamp tool. Get rid of things that are annoying in your uh, aging layer. You don't want them to hog attention, so there we go. Get rid of that. And what was the last thing I was doing? I don't know. Cooper came scurrying over. Oh, I was going to get a little bit of an outline on my ice. It's, it's annoying me a bit. Grab my ice. I'm gonna get icy with it. There's that. Should just be able to do this again. I'm gonna do it to a very light line, and there you go. Treasure, yeah, treasure. Hey, I, I like the treasure. There's just a couple of those, and so on and so forth. And now you can really get into all of the sort of gameplay details of your world. And you can get down to the nitte, gritte. Your Kessel title looks cramped. Of course it is. It's I'm, I'm like moved on way too soon with that. There we go. Now remember, each one of these, I didn't want to say like, you know, this is the greatest. It's just a collection of techniques. Yeah, yeah, icons, and you can do a range of sizes with icons. You can do all kinds of different techniques to get as much or as little visibility as you want in your work. So, like, another thing you can do. I've got a new layer going here. I just made a circle. There's a circle. I used the color from my town icon, and you could double up like this. So it's even more super visible. Another thing you can do is take your t out of town icons which I think are right here, yeah. And you can put them on top of your aging. Look at this. And they'll pop out better. Then you want them to pop even more. Cooper? God, he's just so, so very, very annoying. It's like get, you bring this contrast way up and you get a little bit of white there and then they really begin to pop. And you know, you can pop or not pop them as much as feels good for you. Maybe this circle is something else. Maybe this is like, this indicates this. Maybe you have multiple circles. There's like another one up here, and it's sort of less visible, this kind of stuff. And then there's another one that's down here. The shipping lanes of Blarn, and like the polar islands of Skolak. 
so on and so forth. So it isn't necessarily the end all be all of maps. It's just more a set of techniques that you can use if you're like me and you love a nice little plant in a paper bag. Now, you guys, I like cannot breathe. I have a bit of a hangover going. I'm stuffy. It's going to be cloudy. It's going to be a great day. And I got to get out of here. That was a fun episode of cartoons. Some methods on mapping in full color. Now, does it look like a photo representation of a world? Heck no, because it's a map. And there's a lot more work to do here to get it to look aged right, to put a lot of writing on it, a lot of locations, measuring distances. You can do a lot of little extra work that's going to be nice. You can even do zoom-ins, so you can like, you know, you can use circles outside the map, like up here. And you could do a zoom-in on an island or on a city or a, a mountain range or something. You could put a little zoom-in right there. You could put another zoom-in here. And so on, and so on, and so on. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. This has been another episode of Cartoons. Good to have you guys. Get out there. Make the world just a tiny bit more better than it was yesterday. And uh, have a good time doing it. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And uh, thanks, new patrons who have just showed up on Patreon. If you guys haven't taken a look, go on over there and take a quick gander. And you can always jump on Facebook and all that other good stuff. Say hi de hi and hi de ho So keep it real. Don't steal. You're always going to get a deal. This is hankering. Wait. I'm I almost did it. I almost role played the wrong character. This is Ingrid Burnall. Up here in Bar Home, Northern Roomham area. Me and my new best friend bid you adieu. Uh...